What's going on everybody? This is the Idol Breakdown, the Dean's Edition, where I cross my legs and have Matthew put in a fancy drink in my hand in post. Uh, if you didn't know, I am the Dean of Music at Canada Christian College. It's the only music program that is doing what we're doing that I've ever heard of. We're doing practical stuff that's gonna help musicians become professionals at music and actually make a living, which is what professional means. Let's get on to American Idol. D to Judy. I, I, I wanna go. What a start we've got on our hands. This episode was front loaded with crazy talent. Some of my favorite singers of the whole season are right up on the first 40 minutes of this show. Let's talk about Dita Judy first. Monster Singer sang a beautiful song by Leon Bridges with plenty of space to take your time vocally. And it's, it's one of those things where you can do a lot, but it doesn't feel like you're doing a lot. You have a lot of room to do things, and she did that really well. A lot of dynamics, not just with volume, but with tone. She is a soulful, churchy singer, and she's somebody that is going to help me watch this show all the way through because I'm looking forward every week. I want to know what she does for Hollywood. I want to know what she does and who she pairs up with uh, for the duet round. I'm looking forward to hearing her. I'm also looking forward to hearing about Ellie Marie. I will lay down my heart. Beautiful, smooth voice. A gorgeous song. And that song, I can't think in my head someone singing that song better than her. Just from a vocal standpoint, that song is... It's a sneaky, difficult song to sing. It, the dynamics of that song, going from chest, like the soft, soft verses, I'll close my eyes, where you just can't smooth it up enough to the cry and the belting in the chorus, especially in the, like, the line right before the chorus. Making that transition smooth where it's still emotional, but it's not too harsh is very tough. She did it as good as anyone I've ever heard ever sing that song. I could listen to that audition over and over and over again. She also did a nice little run on Patronize. Don't patronize that si uh, three, two, one, six, five. That's a nice little run to throw in on top of her beautiful tone and control between her chest voice and mixed voice and belting. Really impressive. Athena Jarrett. It's hard to watch you fall in love with somebody new. Man, another great singer. One of my favorite voices I've heard of the whole season, if I'm being honest. Right when she started, I was like, whoa, what a pure jazz singer then katie does what katie does and she goes it's like she's saying if it's not loud it's not good which is so silly because all we have on american idol historically are loud singers i was one of them just people that belt and impress and do stunt singing what a breath of fresh air it would be to have a Nora Jones, to have somebody like Athena Jet. What a great name, by the way, to sing and croon like this. Gorgeous tone, gorgeous voice. And Katie was like, come on, give me more. Let me hear more. And she said she was nervous to throw her in the ring. Yes, if the ring, like if you continue down that line of thinking of this like analogy of this ring of people that are throwing haymakers, yeah. But the her fighting style is not haymakers. It's more stealthy than that. It's more elegant and nuanced than that. It's not just, let's see who can sing the biggest. That is not 
singing big does not equate to singing well. Singing big does not equate to singing well. What she did was perfect. Now, when she had her do the second song, oh my gosh, her sister was absolutely adorable. How she was tearing up in the middle of the first song and how they were like to each other. Oh my gosh, be still my heart. And then her sister's like, can I say something? I think she did this at my recital and it was really good and she should do Never Enough. She did Never Enough with Katie yelling at her to sing it louder. And did I like it more? No, I liked her first song better. It felt like her belting was a little just disconnected and I felt like she was pressured to do that. Then the never enough, like those big, the climactic note, that came really strong and came really true. So all of the stuff between that, those belting notes that sounded a little disjointed, that weren't really, really strong, that's going to come with time because she's got the, the physiology, the right things physically are happening here and here to make those notes come out right, they're just not connecting yet. So that will come with time. But honestly, I could just listen to that first song and her singing that soft jazz stuff. Let's move on. Quintavious Johnson. You were there. A good friend of mine from high school, his name was Quantavious Johnson. So if I accidentally say Quantavious instead of Quintavious, you'll understand why. He sang Alabaster Box and sang the crap out of it. Sounded like a million bucks. Reminds me of Dietrich Haddon, gospel singer. My only question with Quintavious, and I can't remember the guy from the previous episode, but when these gospel singers come in and sing gospel songs and they crush, that's awesome. Are you going to do gospel the whole time? And can somebody rise up from American Idol doing just gospel music? Perhaps, maybe that can happen. If they're trying to be pop and then show off that gospel style in a pop genre, that has not historically gone well. It's been a TV American Idol reality show feature of like, holy cow, look how good this guy is. But when you try to put it in a pop artist package, it doesn't really work out. So I'm going to be interested to see what he does with his voice moving on in the competition. We've got a lot of judge tomfoolery going on in this episode. Most of it I didn't like personally. I thought it was too much. Like the moo game, I'm honestly on the fence about, no pun intended, uh, because cows are fenced. I don't know if that's the pun. Moving forward, they got, I I don't know, was it real? Was it fake? Were they really going to put that much on this moo game where they moo at each other? Whether this girl goes through to Hollywood or not? I genuinely don't know. I wouldn't put it past them. I also wouldn't pass the, put it past the producers. Be like, hey, you guys should do that for one of these contestants. If you have a disagreement, you should do the moo game to see who wins. So the idea could have been fabricated, but then the execution, was that real? It looked pretty real in the moment, but it's like, what are we doing? Are we, what are we doing? Like, was that equivalent to a coin flip? Are we going to judge people by how they sing and if we think they should go through or by if we can laugh or hold our laugh while we scream at each other like farm animals? Dave Theo. In my dream. Dave Theo, great story. Lost 65 pounds in 12 weeks. That's incredible. Um, his grit and his growl is cool, but it's not quite there for me. It's not quite connected seamlessly to his voice it seems like a separate part it's almost like um it's like you're putting on like a jacket and it doesn't it's not all the way on it's like still at the elbows like it's just a little bit separated from the natural part of his voice good for katie for saying hey let's do it again without the ugh and just saying it and then good for 
Dave for taking that on the chin and be like, Roger that. And then doing it, taking the note and then doing it. That's a big deal. It's hard to do and not just crumble in that moment. And then he sounded pretty good. I've found that so much of coaching and I still do vocal lessons and music lessons, singing lessons, vocal coaching, like performance coaching. I found so much of it is just being the person that's going to point out something that the singer is doing that no one is brave enough to tell them they're doing. And so the singer just keeps doing it. And they really just need someone to be like, hey, stop the growl thing. Boom. Instant transformation of their voice. So good for her for doing that. I do these lessons still, by the way. And if you're interested in idle audition prep or any audition prep or just singing well, singing to your full potential, having somebody who knows how to say, hey, this habit you do, let's stop that, try this instead, and work through it with you, uh, hit me up. I'd love to connect and we could actually do one-on-one lessons through Zoom. Just email beckhamlessons at gmail.com and we'll set something up. Reagan Mills. Good old Reagan. I feel like I know exactly who he is. Just growing up in the Bible Belt and then going to Lee University, a Pentecostal type school heavily involved in music. I just ran across a ton of pastor's kids that can sing and play their tail off. Personally, I loved when he started singing and he was so, he brought it all down. When he came in the room, he was very like big and boisterous. And then when he started singing, man, it was like this cool, calm, confidence came over him and he started to play and every note was right in place and he started to sing his face was relaxed and it it told me I know exactly what I'm doing you can sit back and relax and enjoy the gift that God has given me to give you instead what happened Luke actually instigated this and said ah stop we need to rough them up Katie because Katie's usually the one to yell at people to sing louder. Go. And she he kept singing, didn't know really what to do. Literally said, is like, am I still singing? Do you want me to keep going? What am I what's happening? And then Katie just walks over there. He keeps singing. And I think she just honestly, walking over there, I don't think she knew what she was gonna do. And then she just decided to kind of stare at him at the piano and like give him like lovey-dovey eyes and kudos to him for keeping his composure and just singing really well i think he started to push under the pressure of what the judges were doing which is annoying is it more entertaining perhaps but i'd rather just hear him sing how he was going to sing and then they're like give me some grit and then he sang that second song by the clark sisters and started really playing and singing some grit and giving them what they asked for. And it was nice. Very talented guy. Can play very well. Can sing very well. I'm very interested to see what path he goes down. Because I don't think he can. Pl- he can. But it's kind of like Quintavious. It's like, are you going to play Clark Sisters in Hollywood Week? Or are you going to stay with Adele type stuff and show what your artistry would look like in that lane? He did miss some runs here and there. Uh, When he started singing the Clark Sisters song and started doing more like riffs instead of big runs, he was nailing them. Here's why that happens and is super common with singers. When they think of notes individually, even if there's a lot of them in quick succession, how you'd usually think of a run, when he's singing like, hey, those were all coming through because in general, singers will think of those notes as individual notes and they're thinking of each note as they sing it. With a big run, like a seven note, um, oh, those types of things, they think of it as one piece. And when they think of it as one piece, they just try to hit it all at once, like it's one thing, instead of 
give each note individual attention and focus and thought, that's how you fall down the slide instead of take the stairs. And you always want to take the stairs when you're singing a run. Julia Davo. On the biting on the this one is interesting because I bet a lot of you were weirded out by her performance. Just, whoa, this is odd. This is different. What is she doing? Why is she doing it that way? Can I tell you that if David Bowie auditioned for American Idol at that age and did it, it would look exactly like that, except arguably, I think she might have a better voice than he did. Strictly vocal talent and ability speak, speaking. They say no. I would say no too, just because I don't think that's the vibe of the show. I don't think David Bowie would make it to Hollywood. I don't think tons of famous, super, super uh, successful artists would make it to Hollywood because of the style of American Idol. And it's really about a singer's singer for the most part. So she doesn't make it. Here's where it gets weird. Alyssa Ragu, who was top eight of a previous season, comes back and they're best friends. It's part of her story. And then she's like, hmm, can I sing for you guys for old time's sake? And she's like, well, when I was on, I was on as a kid. I was never on as an adult. So I didn't know if I could maybe. And then she sings and she sings her face off and she sings these beautiful runs and they're very good. She had a little bit of pitch problem, but it sounded like she couldn't find the, the what's called the tonal center, basically the key uh, to get her centered on things. Everything was just a little bit sharp, which tells me maybe she didn't hear the piano very well. Easy fix. Um, that being said, then they say yes to her. It just felt weird, man. And I don't think she's in good shape with public opinion because I don't think America as a whole, I know the group crew members in, in the live stream watch party were all like, yo, did she just do that? Like, did she just come with her best friend, her roommate, and then watch her not do well and then just step right in front of her and outshine her and be like, here, let me try. And then the judge is like, wow, you're great. Let's go through right in front of your best friend. Is that what happened? Yes, it's exactly what happened. Here are the two thoughts. Two angles. One, how could you do that right in front of your best friend who just didn't make it and her dream didn't come true and now you're going to like shine in front of her and make your dream come true? That's wrong. That's one angle. The second angle is, are you going to take every opportunity you possibly can, no matter how it looks or what it looks like? to further your career, especially if you have a relationship with your friend where you know that she would be happy for you. And I, with the friend, she could either be legit and be like, I'm so happy for you and I am good and I, man, the good thing that came out of this is you made it, that's great. Or she could be fronting and saying all that for the camera and later being like, I cannot believe she did that. I don't know which one, but if it's the former, then it was, then it was worth it. You got to do what you got to do to further your career. And it's a huge opportunity. Freaking go for it. Would I go back on the show again? Yeah, for fun, honestly. I loved the show. But also for like the career help because it's a big, 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 big boost in your career. I was a street performer for the show. That's what that did for me. She, she, wants, she wants to take advantage of the opportunity. Can I blame her? I don't think so honestly i don't think so when it comes to that i didn't think she was allowed to do that so back in the day the rule officially was if you made it to top 10 you were not allowed to try out for the show again this is the first time they've ever made an exception to that rule because she was top eight and now she's in i guess they changed things it's their rules it's their rule they can change it if they want to it's their show you know so do they make it a precedent now? And maybe more people can do that? I don't know. Um, we'll have to see. If you're enjoying this video, things that I've said, one simple, quick, easy way you can help this channel is to like the video, tells YouTube, hey, 
people are digging this. Not only are they watching it, but they're liking it. There's a ratio of how many people watch this and like it and how many people watch it and don't like it. And the higher that ratio is of people who watch and like it, the more YouTube's like, okay, let's push this a little farther in the search order when people search American Idol. Wouldn't that be sweet if we just took over the YouTube search order for American Idol? Same thing for subscribe, but even bigger. So if you subscribe, YouTube's like, wow, they wanna hear and see all the videos this guy puts out, which hopefully that description fits you. And if you wanna know when I put out random videos about American Idol during the week, hit the subscription bell not the subscription, the notification bell, and you'll be notified. That's why it's called that, when I make a video. Amari. I know that you're toxic. Uh, starts with toxic. I thought the arrangement was cool. I thought the vocal was fine. I thought the trumpet, the mouth trumpet solo was sweet. I actually like that maybe the best. Then they talked to her a bit, and then she sang, she used to be mine. Shoo! That song, my goodness. Music at its highest level touches the heart, not the brain, not the thinking part of us, the feeling part of us. I've heard that song technically sung better before. I can imagine someone singing that song technically perfectly but that is not what music is for music is for touching the heart and how do you touch the heart you make sure the song touches your heart and you sing from there that's exactly what she did and boy i i would i would rather have that performance with that emotional connection over the greatest singer of all time singing that song just from a perspective of let me sing this perfectly and not have this emotional connection i'll take amari every single time connell take me back to 19. great player great singer songwriter sound uh i think he's ready to go knows exactly who he is probably has i don't know but sounds and seems like a guy who has a billion songs that he's already written and is ready to go uh, I'm ready for his tour. I'm ready to buy his album, uh, stream his album, download it. I'll buy it. I'd go on iTunes for him. Katie said, I hope there's more in the gears, or I wonder if there's more in the gears. If you mean volume, I'm going to freak out. If she's making another reference, like, hmm, can you sing? That's really good. The song was really good. Brilliant lyrics. You have a ton of artistry. You're a great guitar player. I love the tone of your voice. But... Can you sing loudly? That's what I feel like 90% of Katie's critiques are coming from. It's like, yeah, but can you can you sing real loud? <laughs> it's like, boy, there's so there's so much more to singing than singing loudly. I'll say it again, singing big does not equate to singing well, to singing good. I loved Connell. Michael Rice. Bye. Beautiful cry in his voice when he went for it in the chorus and it felt like he was just ripping his soul apart in front of us and man it came through and his singing and it didn't feel it's it's impressive when someone is it feels like they're ripping their heart out and they're crying but they don't sound strained or pushed at all his technique was great you can tell when someone sings with great rasp and cry and grit and energy and intensity and then afterwards their voice is normal that they're singing with perfect technique he's not damaging his voice he's not pushing where it, where it feels just really hard um, to get that sound it's just he's doing it the right way they ended it um, wanting to end with the best singer of the night. I honestly, I'd still put Ellie and Athena, and maybe, 
I'd gonna say Quintavious, maybe strictly vocally speaking, um, above him, but I think he's got a better style for the show. Uh, but I mean, he's right there. I mean, he's as good as good can be. Sounded like a million bucks. And I think they're pushing people who get that pimp spot in an audition typically make it to the top 24. They're trying to make you fall in love with that person. So you vote for them and continue to watch when they've made it. So it's probably his fate. I talk about the live stream watch party every Sunday night when the show starts. I live stream myself watching it for members, for Groove Crew members. If you want to become a Groove Crew member, you can hit the join button at the bottom of this video. It's five bucks a month, which is a small coffee from Starbucks equivalent. It's very cheap. And I want that to stay cheap so that we can have as many partiers as we want for these live watch parties. Uh, speaking of which, new members. We have Adam Lindstorm, Judy Cake, is how I'm going to say your last name. Whale Thumbs, the tool band. Welcome back. Nikki Hurst, Julie Scarborough, Sue B. Sue, at your best, typically someone, and Kristen Windsor. Welcome to the crew. The best way to, why did I sing that note? The best way to watch this is through a premiere. Now, let me confess something. Last week was such a train wreck. I uploaded the video to YouTube. It was 32 minutes long. I had a Q&A with an artist here at the college, just down the hall from my office here. And at 20 minutes in that Q&A, which was 20 minutes into the premiere, I came back to my office to do this live Q&A and the video was over. I looked at the video, supposed to be 32 minutes. For some reason, it cut at 18 minutes. So we got to, we just missed not only the last half of the video, but the Q&A, the live Q&A that comes at the end of videos, and it broke my heart. So I promise we're getting this set up correctly this week. So if you're watching this as a premiere, which I hope you are, it releases every Monday, uh, Monday night at 6 central time. You can go ahead and click the live stream link that I'm going to put in the chat right now and go over there and you ask me whatever you want and we can talk about things that have happened. Uh, you can ask questions through Super Chat, which you just donate whatever you want to. It can even be a dollar. And I'll answer your questions there and we'll have 30 minutes to do that. So come join us. Love you all. And we have got, we've got one more episode. We've got one more week of auditions and then it's on to Hollywood Week. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun.